Here we are finally. This is part one of a three-part mini-series where I'm going to outline all of the features and specifications of our 2022 Lifestyle Recon R4T SE. Now this is the camper that we have chosen to travel around the entire country for a period of 12 months with our family of four. Now Tegan and I have not taken a decision to purchase a hybrid camper lightly and hopefully this video will outline some of the reasons that we chose this particular manufacturer, model and specification. Now as mentioned, this is part one of a three part series and this one's gonna contain all of the exterior features from the hitch to the spare wheel, suspension and brakes and of course all the storage options including that huge rear boot area. In part two, we're going to look at all the details of the interior layout and of course that famous kitchen. And in part three, the off-grid capabilities, including all the water tank storage and the electrical system. First up, if you're not familiar with the lifestyle and the Recons specifically, as I mentioned, this is a Recon R4T SE. Now Recon is the model. The R4 is the larger of the sizes compared to its smaller brother, the R2. The T stands for tandem axle and SE is the spec of this build. Now, SE comes in the middle of the range, just above E for Elite and below the flagship LRX. This being an SE build, we have added almost every extra we could possibly put on this camper, apart from just a few. And in this video and series, I'm going to caption all of the optional extras, so you'll know what comes standard with these vans and what we've added onto it. So let's get started on the exterior, starting from the front. Now before we get onto the exterior features of this van, let's talk about one of the selling points for us and that is the complete timberless design. The chassis and body are all constructed from high grade, high quality Australian steel. Now although this doesn't do anything for the weight of the camper, having the internal walls, the body and even the hatch frames supported by steel gives us an extremely durable and tough frame. It also eliminates the chance of any water ingress and damage from mould down the track. But let's get straight in to the front of this van. So right down the front of the van, we can see we have a hot dip galvanized tubular steel frame. And this drawbar section here is coated in a rock chip resistant black spray on coating. Now, one of the options that we did opt for on this van was an extended drawbar. And this adds 300 millimeters to the length between the hitch and the front of the van. Now, there's a couple of reasons that we did this. And the first advantage for this is it gives you more room around the back of your vehicle when you're attached to the trailer. The second reason, it gives you more space on the A-frame here for potential storage options down the track. And thirdly, it gives you an incredibly stable towing platform. But this doesn't come without its disadvantages too. The first is of course you're going to be adding to your total length of your combination. You're going to be increasing the ball weight or downforce weight on the ball here. And this is not only because you're moving those axles further back in the van, but also because you're likely to be using this area for further storage. And probably the biggest disadvantage is a decreased ramp over angle. Because you're increasing the distance between the rear axle of your vehicle and the front axle of the van, you are going to end up with a less of an angle underneath this drawbar, which means you may get caught up on some off-road obstacles. Moving on, we are using the industry-leading Cruisemaster DO35 hitch. This has a huge amount of articulation and is going to meet our needs perfectly off-road. It's an incredibly easy hitch to use. It's just a matter of lining it up in the reverse camera, dropping it down, locking the mechanism in place and fitting that dust cap. We also have two electrical plugs here. The first being a very generic seven pin trailer plug and the second being an Anderson plug to power that DC DC charger in the van to charge up those batteries while you're on the road. We also have our trail safe breakaway system and this is attached to the rear of the tow vehicle. In the unlikely and unfortunate situation that this camper were to detach from the tow vehicle, this will pull out and activate the brakes on the camper, preventing it from rolling away and causing further issues. Moving further down, we have our Cruise Master handbrake, and this is going to activate the drum brakes on the front axle of the camper only. Next to this, we have our drawbar tap, and this is one of the optional extras we've added to this van. It's supplied from our main water tank and powered through a 12 volt water pump. I fitted a generic water fitting to this, and this means I can use my hoses to wash items down or just wash my hands after packing the camper away. Just a little further back, we have our heavy duty arc jockey wheel. Now, you'll, believe it or not, to get the black color is one of the optional extras in the lifestyle package. Now, it may just be a jockey wheel, but it's got plenty of useful features, including 250 millimeters of height adjustment at each of the four locked in positions. It's got a removable magnetic handle, sealed bearings on a dual wheel design. It's got a variable yoke lock, which allows for the best position of that wheel to be locked when stowed away and provides maximum clearance for that ramp over angle as spoken about before. 
Now we didn't have this van long before we left on our trip and I didn't want to spend thousands of dollars on a bike rack to fit onto the front of the A-frame here. So what I've done is gone down to Bunnings and picked up a few rubber floor mats which I've cut to size and cable tied to the drawbar. This protects both the bar and the bikes alike. Now down the working side of the van we also have our mast adapter. This allows us to fit a 4 meter telescopic mast that houses our Starlink internet satellite dish when we're parked up. So moving on to the vented gas storage and in here we have our two four kilo gas bottles and these gas bottles and the system here utilizes the new LCC 27 style fitting over the old POL style. There's many advantages to the LCC 27 valve and the first one is it's way more intuitive. It's right to tight and it's much easier to tighten to get a grasp on that thread with this large plastic nut. The best thing about it is it has an inbuilt check valve, which means that it won't allow gas to flow when it's not connected up, so we risk the chance of losing our bottles or getting severe leaks. It still retains the old POL style fitting on the interior of the thread and can be used with any appliances such as your barbecues and other gas fittings. Now another great feature that Lifestyle implemented into these new vans is this new hinged bracket design. We simply under that clasp, move these brackets out the way and we can easily remove those gas bottles in just a matter of seconds. This particular camper is 90% electric with the only gas appliance being the hot water system. So one four kilo gas bottle that we're using at the moment is averaging about five weeks and that's using the hot water system every single day. We've got almost two months as our longest stretch and two weeks as our shortest time when we used our Weber barbecue quite heavily. Now moving up from the drawbar and onto the front facing panel of the camper, the first thing we notice are these sacrificial stone guards on each side of the camper. Now these do have a little bit of flex in them, which means it provides a little bit of cushioning from any rocks and stones that flicked up from your tow vehicle, and they do angle them down towards the ground. So they're less likely to hit into the back of your vehicle at full force. Now they are fully replaceable. They undo with four bolts and can be replaced with new ones if damaged. Moving up, we have the front padded cover. Now this is another optional extra provided by Lifestyle. It does provide a lot of cushioning and prevents stones and rocks that do hit up here, rebounding into your tow vehicle at full speed. It's easily removable with a Velcro strap down the bottom, some press studs along the sides and sail track up the top. So if you need to clean it or dry it out, it's easy to do so. On either side of the camper, we do have these moving handles and this is designed to help maneuver the camper around when it's not attached to a vehicle. But given the weight and size of this camper, good luck doing that on anything other than a very hard packed and flat ground. So moving down and the last feature on the front facing panel of this camper are gonna be these large mud guards bolted to the sacrificial stone guards. They help protect the underside of the van and also those brakes and suspension components a little further down from rocks and debris being flicked up from your tow vehicle. You may have noticed I've also fitted a stone stopper to the front of this van and this is an aftermarket accessory, not one that's supplied from Lifestyle. In my opinion, the stone stomper is probably the best and most efficient way to prevent stone damage to both the front of your camper and the rear of your tow vehicle. As with many of the aftermarket accessories I've fitted to this van, I'll put links to all of these products in the description below. Now moving down the far side of the van, the first feature we come across is this front storage hatch. This houses one of the clearance lights, a reflector, and a couple of these push compression locks to open up this area. Now all of the hatches on this camper are designed in the same way. They're all recessed into the side of the van and they have a double sealing system. You have a rubber seal on the exterior and a foam seal on the interior, which engages with the lip of the frame. So this storage area has a couple of levels, the first shelf being all the way through the full width of the van. It is perfect for all your pole type accessories. Moving down below, we have a small storage area, one on each side sitting on either side of that gas bottle housing. Now it is a bit of a funny shape and I'll put some of the measurements up on the screen now, but for us, we keep a lot of our utility hardware in here, including our water hoses, water filters, our gray water hoses, electrical cables, some fuel, and a couple of other accessories. Now the top shelf features a dual light design but switched from the other side so it's nice and easy to see but these lower sections are incredibly dark at night and it's impossible to see anything. So I've gone out and bought some of these cheap sensor lights. They're an LED strip powered off AAA batteries and as soon as it detects movement it will turn on for 30 seconds. Once there's no movement for 30 seconds it automatically turns off and it lights up this area along with a few of the other storage hatches very well. Again links in the description below. Moving on from this, we also have our first of our four roof clips and an exterior light, which is switched from a light switch just inside the main access door. Now moving down and we have the toilet canister hatch. This is just standard hardware that accompanies the Thetford toilet products. Moving back from that, we have another one of Lifestyle's designs, recessed hatches. This one here 
accesses the hot water system. Now, there's no controls or switches inside this compartment here. This is just to allow that hot water system to vent while in use. Now, although you do have to open this every time you access or use that hot water system, it means that sealing this back up again, we have an entirely dust-proof van. Now, all the way down to the bottom of the van, and we have our rock sliders. These are tubular steel rock sliders, powder-coated black, and they go all the way around the van. This first section on the far side here is one long straight bar, secured at either end, and also gutted in the middle as well. This is one of the optional extras offered by Lifestyle. Continuing on, we have our only window on the van other than the one on the main access door. Fairly standard caravan fitting. We'll talk a bit more about that in the interior episode. And we have our large T-locked storage hatch. Now we'll get onto this at the end of this episode, but moving on, we also have a recessed hatch down the back here. This hatch here also using those black push compression locks and featuring that dual sealing system. Not a storage hatch in here, this one here just provides access to our RCDs and our 240 volt charging inputs. Now the last feature on the exterior of the far side of the van is the outdoor shower behind this hatch here and our dust suppression system. The dust suppression system is a proprietary design by Lifestyle. It uses a 12 volt fan within this compartment here to suck fresh air in through this vent and filtered through a dual element uni filter material. Now this entire van is linked together on the interior with the exception of that front storage box. So once this is turned on, everything apart from the front storage is pressurized and going to have the best chance of resisting dust ingress. What this also means is we're able to use that storage hatch down the front for things like fuel with an odor and don't have to worry about those odors coming inside the camper. Moving on to the rear of the camper, we have two more of those roof clips, one in each top corner of the rear panel here. In the center here, we have our outwards facing LED light controlled by a switch from inside that kitchen compartment. Now when purchasing a recon camper, you're going to get a spare tire on the far side of the van. And on this side here, you can choose from three options. You have the drop down table, a firewood box, or a second spare tire. Now we initially chose to go for a firewood box option. This is an aluminum checker plated box with a grated base so that the small pieces will fall through and a canvas top cover to keep it all dry. It worked well for what it was designed for, but we found it just wasn't quite suiting our needs. So since then, I've still used the original bracket here and I've now fitted a generic generator box. In here, we do keep an Honda eu 22i generator along with a few other items and things that we don't want to be storing inside the camper. Affixed to the side of that, we also have our collapsible rubbish bin and collapsible bucket. Mounted to that spare tire on the far side, we're using a crash pad bag system. Now on the far side of the rear panel of the van, we have our water tap fill points. We have two points here, which have now been moved from the side of the van to the rear. One fill point is for the main supply and the other for our drinking water. Now moving down, we also have the upgraded LED tail lights on these newer models. We have a smoke typed parker brake, some bright LEDs for the brake lights, we also have sequential indicators and the addition of reverse lights too. And again, here is where we can see those rock sliders, one on each side of the rear of the van here. They follow the contour and the angle of the rear of the van and bolt into some of the structural mounts within. We have two recovery points down here, although I have no idea whether they're rated or not, I'm sure they will come in handy if we ever need to be winched or pulled out from the rear. Moving around to the working side of the van, the most predominant feature here is gonna be this massive storage hatch here, which is accesses the famous kitchen, but more on that in part two of this mini series. Between that hatch and the rear corner of the van, we have this sail track mounted down the edge here. And that's gonna support the annex that we've optioned for on this camper as well. Another option that you can get from Lifestyle. Moving down though, and we have another one of those recessed hatches. This is another storage area underneath the kitchen. Although not a very big area, you do get a much larger space in here if you opt for a single axle camper. We also have some of the componentry like the water pumps and some plumbing along with some electrical gear in there taking up a little bit of space. But we use this area here predominantly for our pots and pans and a couple of collapsible kitchen items. Should also go noted again that it's another very dark area that you just cannot see in at night. So again, another one of those sensor lights popped in there fixes that problem perfectly. Just next to that hatch, we have the exterior 240 volt outlet, which has come in extremely handy in our circumstance, often used for either Starlink internet or our electric bug zappers. We have the optional extra, which is the drop down exterior picnic table. This is an accessory I'd highly recommend getting added on. You'd be surprised even though with a large amount of space in that kitchen area, this gets used whether or not we're pulled up for two hours or two weeks. This table is always down at camp. 
Now just above that, you have another exterior light, again switched from a control panel just inside the main access door. This also gets used quite a lot, particularly since we're eating and dining outside. We'll have a dining table set out here. When it's dark, this will shine directly down onto it. We also have our handle here for our main access door. This has a couple of lights in it, just a small dull light to locate the handle and another bright exterior white light. Now underneath all this, we have just a small part of the rock sliders. Now it should also be noted that the rock sliders do not go underneath the access door. So without this present, it is somewhat vulnerable. Now the access door here is a fairly common caravan fitting. It's made by Kamek. It has the usual features like your split door functionality. So you can have your, just your fly screen or the full door closed by itself. We also have that single window I'm on the top half here, which can also be curtained off from the inside. But it should be noted, it's a little bit shorter than your standard full size caravan door. So if you're used to something a little bigger, this may come in a bit of a surprise. Now we also have a dual lockout feature here as well. So we can open the door all the way out, giving it the maximum opening width and lock it to the side of the van. But we can also use this small hook here to lock it at more of a 90 degree angle. Then the reason you might want to do this is as you can see here, we have this sail track here, which is in line with the edge of the awning. So this is where that annex wall would be fitted if set up. Being able to lock the door in here means that it won't rub against it as you won't be able to open it all the way up past this point. Down the front, we have the last of our roof clips up here, and we also have more of those black compression locks to access the front storage area. Now, of course, the top shelf is gonna to connect to the other side that I spoke about earlier, but the bottom is a mirror image of the other side. But there are just a couple of differences in this storage compartment. So up the top here, we have three switches. The one on the left is going to raise and lower the roof actuators. The one in the center controls our dust suppression system and the one on the right turns on the lights for this upper front storage hatch. Now underneath that front shelf and above this storage compartment down the bottom, we have our Cruise Master airbag suspension controls. Turning this system on and we're able to see the pressure in each side of the van in those airbags through the digital LCD display. The last feature on this camper is of course the awning itself. This awning here is a Fiamma F45S awning. It is 4.5 meters long by roughly 2.3 meters out from the van. Now it is a manual wind out awning. There's no electronics going on here. And the fact that our roof is down nice and low, setting it up before you lift the roof up, makes it very easy, particularly if setting up with one person, which is very possible once you've got the hang of it. Once it's rolled all the way up, the legs can be straightened up. We can put that center support in. And we do have the optional anti-flap kit. And this is an optional extra from Lifestyle, but it is going to be required if you're ordering the annex to suit this awning. In addition to that, we also use the ARB Navigator straps. And this just slots into the sail track on the leading edge of the awning and helps to secure it down, making sure that this awning isn't going anywhere, even in high winds. Now, the great thing about the Fiamma awning is there is two of those sail tracks in that leading edge. So that means that even if we are using those ARB straps, we can still insert our privacy screens in the other track and have it all set up as such. Now, the reason that Lifestyle use an awning like this, the wind out one by Fiamma, rather than the more typical or standard barrel type awnings is because this is the only extrusion that sits outside the side panels of these vans. Those more common barrel style have these braces that come down the side, both back and front, which do add width to the van and are also vulnerable from damage when on narrow tracks. As you can see here, it's a nice and compact unit and very securely supported against the roof of this van. So now we've had a look all the way around this camper, let's have a look up top. Now being a hybrid camper, there isn't a whole lot of real estate on the roof given that smaller footprint, but what real estate there is, is predominantly taken up by solar panels. On the roof here, we have three 360 watt solar panels, giving us a total of 1.08 kilowatt of solar input. This is equivalent to about 77 amps of input at peak performance at 13.5 volt. Given the size of this system, it is another optional extra offered by Lifestyle. Now, what real estate is not taken up by the solar panels up there houses the Wabasto rooftop air conditioning unit. And this is a 240 volt air conditioning and heating unit, but it does run off our electrical system off grid as well. With the awning set up, now is the perfect time to show you just how easy it is to set up our camper. The first thing you need to do is go around and undo each of the clips securing the roof. With the four clips undone, the next step is just to open the main access door and secure that just to allow ample airflow as the roof lifts up. The last step is just to get access to that front storage area and press the roof actuator button.
And there you have it, 90 seconds later, we have a camper that is fully set up and ready to go. So you can imagine just how quick and convenient this is for those quick overnight stops, particularly when arriving at camp late at night, we don't have to set up that full awning. Now, so far I've talked a little bit about the exterior hardware of the camper. I've shown you all around the camper and on top of the roof, along with how to operate the lifting mechanism and the awning. But now it's time to have a look underneath. So under here is one of the impressive features of the Lifestyle Recon, and one of the reasons it can truly call itself an off-road camper. So let's start front to back, and we'll go through all of the features underneath here. Up the front, behind those large mud guards, we have our two black arc stabilizer legs. They lock in at various points and use a regular wind-down mechanism. However, I use this drill bit attachment here to make that process just that little bit quicker. Again, links in the description below. Now in the center of the chassis rails from the drawbar, we have a couple of gas lines and the handbrake lines. Now all the plumbing required for the shower, toilet and hot water system is located in the front far side corner. There's a solid hose from both the indoor shower and the interior sink, and they are both filtered through a HEPO filter and into a gray water tank. Now the HEPO filter acts like a one-way valve, allows the water to go into the tank, however it doesn't allow the smells and fumes from that gray water tank to come back up through the drains. The 65 litre grey water tank is located just in front of the front axle and is an optional extra when purchasing one of these vans. On the far side of the van, just next to the grey water tank, we have a 12 litre air tank enclosed in this metal housing and this is connected to an air compressor inside the van. It has a drain tap at the base and this supplies the pressured air for both our suspensions and our air fitting in that front storage area. Moving down onto what has to be my favorite part of this van, which is another optional extra, the Cruise Master ATX airbag suspension. So you might be thinking, how is the suspension on such a well kitted out and feature packed van one of my favorite features? Well, let me show you. It is no secret that Cruise Master is the industry leader when it comes to off-road suspension on campers and caravans in Australia. And for this camper here, we have chosen the Cruise Master ATX fully airbagged suspension system, which means there are no springs involved. This system with the tandem axles is rated to 4.5 ton ATM, so it well exceeds the legal ATM of the camper. It's paired up with the M46 remote reservoir monotube shock absorbers. And the quality here is second to none. You can see the protection plates here bolted to the arms to protect all of the sensitive and vulnerable components behind. All of the arms have channels where the wiring is laid, again to protect it from any unnecessary damage from stone and chips coming from the tow vehicle. It's got locking, camber and tow settings, so it's as close as you can get to set and forget in terms of wheel alignment. There is absolutely no doubt this is the best suspension I've ever towed behind any vehicle I've ever owned, both on and off-road. And while this is all absolutely awesome, the biggest advantage to this is the ability to level and change the height of this camper. Now when you're driving along, you do have to have the airbag set to a standard height to make sure that your piston in your shock absorbers is sitting centered in that cylinder. This allows for the maximum compression and rebound in that suspension system. But when you get to camp and you're parked up, that's where the adjustments can happen. There is no more worrying about leveling ramps and trying to get the camper in the right position, moving your vehicle around. It is as simple as flicking a switch and moving a couple of paddles to lift and lower each side of the camper individually. This particular feature is probably more important on a hybrid camper like ours rather than a standard caravan setup and that's because all of our facilities are on the exterior of the van. So take our kitchen for example with a set kitchen bench height. We can increase and decrease the entire height of the van or just this side alone when we're camped on a slope so they have this matching our requirements perfectly. It also means that if we are camped on a slope, I'm not going to be hitting my head on the canopy doors. The Cruise Master suspension arms are also paired up to 12 inch electric drum brakes. They're matched with an ROH 16 inch alloy wheel and a 265 75 16 mud terrain tyre. Moving back from this, all of the underside is protected by a checker plate aluminium plates. There are no water tanks or excessive fittings exposed to potential stone damage. At the rear of the van, we have again those two black arc stabilizer legs. To wrap up part one of this mini series, I want to talk about the huge storage compartment in the rear corner of this van, which our family generally refers to as the boot. On this large hatch, we're also using compression locks, but as opposed to using the push locks on the other recessed hatches, in this one, we're using these large T-locks. The hatch itself is gas strut assisted, making it really easy to both lift up and bring back down again. 
New to the 2022 models are these covers that protect the T-Lock fittings. On one side, we had the nice laser cut recon logo, and on the other, a long wide LED strip. As you can see, we fit a lot of gear in here. So in order to show you exactly how big the space is, let's start by getting all of this out. And check it out. The main compartment in here is 1,400 millimeters wide, 620 millimeters high, and 1,007 millimeters deep. And that little pocket to the right hand side, well that's another 430 millimeters wide, 320 millimeters high, and 710 millimeters deep. There is a huge amount of storage in this area. It can even fit a couple of the kids. <laughs> now in true lifestyle fashion, there is no wasted space in this camper, and this storage area is no different. Not only do we have this cavernous area in here for any gear that we wish, we also have these three storage hatches up the top up here. Now, although the access ports for them are quite small, these hatches go up 230 millimeters high by 120 millimeters deep and run the entire length of this storage compartment. So you can fit plenty of gear in here. Now we personally fit a few of our 10 amp leads, some solar controllers, some hammocks, all of our laundry and detergent and washing gear, some gloves, fire lighters, and all of our bathroom equipment, along with some extra toilet rolls. It all fits up there very nicely, easy to access, regardless of how full this compartment is down here. Now moving just that little bit further down, we have a small storage cupboard here as well. It is only a very small and shallow cupboard, coming in at about 100 millimeters deep, but this is where all of my cleaning gear for the car and the camper is packed away. But of course, that's not it. Underneath these false floor cutaways, we've got these hinging platforms here, cut down the middle, so we can still access them even if some gear is stored away. Now down here is primarily the utility side of the van. We have our three 200 amp hour batteries and our four water tanks, along with all the associated electrical cabling and plumbing. But there is some room for a little bit of storage around here too. So I keep a few things I don't use very often, like a 12 volt battery charger, some extra grease, some 10 amp extension cables, a vehicle diagnostic tool, and some testing equipment we use for some YouTube videos. Now on the left hand wall of this storage compartment, we have a couple of switches. The top one is the LED switches that in controls not only the LED strip on the T-lock protection cover on the hatch itself, but also an inbuilt interior light shining down in this storage area. So if you want to access any of this gear at night, it is very easy to do so. The second switch controls the 3 kVA 240 volt inverter, and again, more on that in part three. We also have this small piece of perspex here on a couple of hinges to give us easy access to some of the 12 volt fuses. Removing the three bolts on the leading edge and we can hinge away this entire panel to access and view the entire electrical system. So to say it again, that space in there is quite deceiving with just how much you can pack up in there. And we've been on the road for four months, so we've quite settled in what we've needed. And everything fits in the vehicle and the camper's combination just fine. Now lastly, for the part one mini-series for the Recon, we are looking at the dimensions and the weights. So the total length for this R4 SE is 6.9 meters long, and that is from the DO35 hitch at the front all the way to that spare tire at the back, not just the body alone. Now keeping in mind that's also including that extra 300 millimeters in the extended drawbar. So if you weren't to get that, it'd be 6.6 .6 meters long. Travel width, we're looking at 2.25 meters wide, so narrower than your standard caravan, but only just bigger than the Land Cruiser 200 series. Travel height, we're looking at about 2.4 meters, and that's including that rooftop air conditioning fitted to the roof. Now for us, that's only just higher than all the accessories fitted on our roof rack of our Land Cruiser as well. So we're pretty confident in knowing that if our Land Cruiser can fit through somewhere, so can this camper. Now in terms of the weights, keeping in mind that this is an SE build with almost all of the optional extras added, and we come in at 2.5 ton, completely empty. Now this van does have an ATM or a total loaded capacity of 3.5 tons, so you do retain a true one ton loading capacity. Now the ironic thing with these hybrid campers is there's a lot less room to pack a lot of gear, so you end up taking a lot less with you. When you end up getting one of those full-size off-road caravans, you can fit everything inside them in every cupboard and nook and cranny. But generally, off-road caravans don't have the sort of payload that something like this has. Now, we did get this camper weighed before we left with all of our gear that we required for 12 months, including 320 litres of water on board and two full gas bottles, and we came in at a total of 3.26 ton, which I don't think is too bad, considering we're a family of four living out of this full-time. Now, one thing you may have noticed is the distance between those axles and the hitch on the front of this van. It's quite long, and this is gonna give us a fairly heavy tow ball weight. 
Now you're looking for a tow ball weight in between at 7.5 to 12.5 percent of the total weight of the van. And in this case, we're looking at about 270 kilos down ball weight. So it's not a lightweight by any means. That concludes part one of the Recon Rundown. Now this camper is packed full of features and Lifestyle's attention to detail really comes out to shine when looking at some of the finer points of this build. This is not to say that this is a perfect van or to say that I haven't thought of ideas that could make it better and improve the functionality, but it is more than enough for the common traveler or the adventurous family. Now in part two, we're going to look at the interior layer and design and some of the features inside, but also take a look at the signature kitchen, which is probably the main reason most people look to buy one of these campers. In part three, we'll look at some of the off-grid capabilities, including the water capabilities and the full electrical system. But I hope today's video has been helpful and I hope to see you in the next episode. Cheers.